Um, our next speakers are Kim Jenkins and Lisa Appleby, who represent Recovery Revolution. out tonight that shows a commitment to your community and the concern of this epidemic. Um, on September 14, 2013, Cody Jenkins at age 22 died from complications of the disease of drug addiction. I'm Cody's mom. I'm also co-founder of Recovery Revolutions from Mansfield. This is my partner, Lisa. Um, I just wanted to share with y'all what I've learned over the last year. This is all very new to me. Um, I went through a lot of struggles with my son, but I just, from an observer's standpoint and from taking action, I just want to share what I've learned. Um, I want to repeat the definition for addiction. I know you've heard it once, but it's so important for you to understand and understand the key con concepts within the, de the definition. Addiction is defined as a chronic relapse, relapsing brain disease that is characterized by compulsive drug seeking and use despite, dis despite harmful consequences. It is considered a brain disease because drugs change the brain. They change its structure and how it works. These brain changes can be long lasting and can lead to many harmful, often self-destructive behaviors. And it's so important to understand what addiction is. And I want you to really think about that definition with that being said, what do we know? Well, number one, we know drug, drug addiction is a disease. It's chronic. Um, it's compulsive. It's harmful. It changes the brain. And it, it leaves long lasting effects and causes harmful, self-destructive behavior. We know that drug addiction is non-discriminatory. It hits the underprivileged, the middle and high class, black, white, Hispanic, no one is exempt. 60% of all addicts start with pills. Addicts do not learn from the news that their addict friends or family member has just died. They know, they know what they're doing is harmful and it can kill them. The drug alters their brain chemistry, causing them to make bad decisions and continue the same behavior over and over again. Given that, the addict cannot resist the drug and needs intervention. I had a fellow from the gas company come to my house not too long ago, and we shared a discussion about drug addiction. He had six friends from his high school class die from drug overdose. And he told me a story about being an EMT in Chicago, Illinois. And at that point, he was in a training position. His lead EMT and he were called to um, a house. Upon entering the house, they had EMT pronounced a fellow um, dead, and it was due to drug overdose. He looked at the girlfriend and he said, now where's the rest of the drugs? She says, I don't have any. And he said, I know there's more drugs. It's better that you give them to me then wait until the state police come. That woman, even though she saw that drug was just used by her boyfriend and caused his death, was saving that for herself. 
She had no, she thought nothing about the fact that that very same drug could kill her. She saved that drug for, for use by herself after the fact. Well, needless to say, she finally gave up the drug and they carried it out of there. <clears throat> the point that I'm trying to make is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> they don't look at somebody else's death. That doesn't cause them to stop using because it's a disease. We need to continue to educate our youth, 6th through 12th graders, we need to insist that our schools have a zero tolerance poly policy for drugs. We need to request that our doctors stop pre prescribing pain pills, but instead provide physical therapy, other methods of working through pain. We need to educate our parents on what it means to enable our children. And I am as guilty of this as any of you out there. So I'm not standing here trying to preach. <laughs> I just know from my own mistakes that we as parents need to stop fixing our kids' problems and allow our children to feel the pain and su suffer consequences of bad behavior. We need to lock up our pills. All, all the pill, all pills, and we need to lock up all pills, and we need for parents to take responsibility of the distribution of medication within their household. When, a, when an elderly family member dies, we need to get a hold of those medications. Don't leave them in the house. We need to take those medications and dispose of them, or any medications that have, have expired or unwanted. The state police have a drug take back program for unwanted and expired medications. So you need to call the state police and see how you turn over these drugs. They, and if, they're, if you still have drugs in the house, they need to be locked up. We need to fight legislation on the legalization of marijuana, which is a gateway drug. It's a gateway drug because it puts the marijuana user in contact with dealers who have much harder drugs to offer and are more than willing to push their harder drugs on the, on the user for a more satisfying high. It's my opinion on the onset, in addition to previously mentioned ideas, we need to focus more attention on the currently established <coughs> drug addict, sort of a top-down approach. <coughs> By focusing on the current addicts, we will provide better role models for our youth. We can accomplish this by promoting recovery, by telling and publishing publishing recovery successes. Make the addict want it more than anything else. Help them to see that their worst day sober is better than their best day high. As parents, <laughs> we can stop enabling this addict by giving them food, shelter, money, the car, and insisting if, if they live under our roof, they must be in a recovery program. We need to encourage long-term rehabilitation for, for 90 days, minimally. <clears throat> a distance away from their home so they cannot walk out and tell, and tell them, you're not coming home until you've completed the program. It takes a minimum of 90 days for the brain chemistry to return to somewhat normal. And there are free programs out there. Teen Challenge is one of them. And there's a whole list Lisa found on the back, in the back. We also need to remember that an addict's
medicine is meetings. They need to be with people that know what they're going through, talk about it, have a sponsor. So as a community, we can help there too. We can offer the addicts in recovery a ride to meetings, NAA -A 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 and individual counseling. This is their medicine, providing them with resources of where they can go to find housing, food, and medical assistance, and not doing it for them. They have to learn to do things for themselves. Addiction is a non-curable disease and requires a lifetime commitment to stay in recovery. And like I said, those are my observations, those are my opinions. And I don't want to offend anybody, but I see a lot of mistakes that I made. And I just want you all to know, you don't have to make those same mistakes. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you all for coming. My name is Lisa Appleby, and I'm a recovering addict born and raised right here in Tioga County. As an addict, I know the struggles I endure trying to get clean in an area with so little support and few resources with a giant stigma. I made the choice to break my anonymity and show the world that addiction affects everyone. It does not discriminate, and we as addicts deserve a chance at recovery without the fear of being cast out by society. Small towns talk, and it's easy for an addict to feel guilty or afraid to ask for help when they have to fear being judged or discriminated against for having a disease. It took me three stints in rehab, incarcerations, detoxes, overdoses, and hurting and losing everyone in my family <coughs> and everyone that I love to finally fall flat on my face and surrender to my disease, to finally reach out and use every resource available, to scream, I am an addict, help me. But why, why didn't rehab work the first time? Well, simply put, I was set up for failure. Tioga County does not have the proper resources, services, or support for addicts. We're immediately set up for failure as we are discharged from jails, rehabs, detoxes, and hospitals, usually with little to no family support, legal obligations, no job, no transportation, and a brain that's full of guilt, anger, confusion, desperation, and is screaming for us to get high. This is why Recovery Revolution was formed, to break the stigma of addiction to support, guide, and love those who are struggling as well as the families of those who are addicted. We focus on offering volunteer services to assist addicts with tra successful transition into the community. Services such as transportation to meetings, transportation to appointments and court dates, referrals to reputable detox and rehabilitation centers, as well as assistance in job searching, and most of all, to give them support and love. As of right now, Recovery Revolution meets twice a month, the second and fourth Thursday, of each month at the Richmond Township Building in Mansfield, Pennsylvania at 7 p.m. Our first meeting focuses on support, support for addicts and families. Our second meeting is our volunteer meeting for those who are willing to donate their time to plan community awareness events, fundraisers, offer ideas and ways to implement them. Some services that we're attempting to put into place at the time are a transportation list, a crisis phone line, websites, um, and a Facebook page. As of right now, our meetings have anywhere from five to only 12 people in attendance, and we need your support. Donate an hour of your time each month and be the change that you want to see. They say it takes a village to raise a child, but it takes a community to battle addiction. With Wade focusing on prevention and education and Recovery Revolution focusing on addict support, we can take a stand and fight back against this, this disease that is killing our children. Be the voice of those who lost theirs. Thank you.